Marcelo Garcia is the black belt's favorite black belt. To me, he's the greatest of all time. And I know in this sport, we can be pretty liberal with the phrase greatest of all time, but if anyone deserves that title, it's Marcelo Garcia. Now, Jiu Jitsu is still in the process of growing. Every generation is learning from the previous generation's mistakes. And because of that, I've always been of the opinion that the current generation is and always will be the best. And I don't mean my generation, I mean whatever generation is current. It would be silly to think that the kids on their way to being world-class black belts right now aren't watching the current world-class black belts and building upon all their techniques. Well, Marcelo Garcia makes me question my opinion on that. It's been over a decade since he's competed and we're still seeing a lot of the techniques he brought forward being used at the highest levels of the sport. This current generation of single leg X guard players, you have Marcelo to thank for that. The one arm choke you see Gordon Ryan use so much, that's straight from Marcelo. He was also one of the first to bridge the gap between wrestling and jiu-jitsu. And I don't mean he had amazing wrestling, but he was able to put the two together. You take his arm drag from the guard, for example, that is wrestling and jiu-jitsu colliding. Now we're going to go over all his best positions and they all synergize really well with each other. So I would recommend trying to piece these things together, but I'll put timestamps ahead for the people that just want to jump to a specific position. We could make this whole video about butterfly guard with butterfly and any of the other positions we're going to cover. There is so much more that you could dive into if the position really clicks with you, where I really want to focus is on what Marcelo is the best at and how these positions connect. So for butterfly guard, we're going to focus on three key things. It's going to be the arm drag from butterfly guard. Marcelo's dummy sweep from butterfly guard, and then we're going to talk about how to use the butterfly to get to single leg X. Now, to be clear, a lot of his guillotine setups, they come from butterfly as well, but I'm going to save the guillotine for its own section of the video later on. The thing I really like about butterfly guard is it's really accessible. It's an easy guard to get to, similar to half guard, where if I sit down, I put myself in the position, I pretty much have the guard set up, and it doesn't require further setup than that. Whereas if you compare this to like single leg X guard or X guard that we're going to talk about later in the video, those guards require a lot of setup. And if your opponent's aware of the path you need to take to get there, they may shut it down and you might not have a chance to get to your best guard. Now you could be one dimensional in your approach and you could just use the butterfly to get to single leg X. But if you do that, you're missing a ton of attacks along the way that we could take advantage of. One being the arm drag to the back. Now, this is a basic one. I'm sure if you've covered the arm drag at your school, you've covered this move. And just like any other move, it's an easy one if your opponent does nothing. If they let you drag the arm and they stay on their knees, you're going to get an easy back take out of it. Well, it becomes more difficult when your opponent stands up as you're dragging the arm. Now, I have some clips I put together of Marcelo explaining this exact scenario. So I'll let you guys just hear it from the source. Time when you got this, you get to his back. You make to his back. If he does it, but starts standing up. You know, if, if I just wave, he can just swing his arm, he just put his back on the mat. So you and the body has to get used to like, it's not gonna be easy to take his back. I need to, I need to keep climbing the ladder to take his back. So for example, if I get to a point, I make to his back, he starts standing up. I need to keep standing up with him. I just cannot be here, because he can easily set up his way out of there. So after you stand it up, you want to get out the ground. But if you stay on the ground, he can just pick you up and pull you underneath. So I'm walking, I'm on the half guard. He starts it up, I need to get on top. So the whole point is like, I need to anticipate it. They're like, I'm going to his back, he's standing up. As he's standing up, I stand up. When you both stand up, I need to jump on his back. I cannot jump on his back straight from the bottom to the top. But once I get back on my feet, I need to jump on his back. So something to take from that is every movement you do in jiu-jitsu is going to elicit a response. And I'm not talking about the move as a whole. I'm talking about the movements within it. So when I drag his arm across my body, he's going to stand up as a reaction to that. When he stands up, I stand up to follow him. Then he pummels in for an underhook. I jump his underhook and take the back, right? 
but it never works like I do three moves and you do one. It's always one for one unless there's a giant skill mismatch. So every move you're analyzing and planning for, you should be thinking like this, right? Each individual movement I do is going to elicit your response. I have to plan on what that response is going to be and follow up. So after the scenario we just talked about, a common reaction on your opponent's part is going to be to square up and try to face you. So you drag the arm, you get to the side of your opponent, they turn and face you. Marcella will usually follow this up with a double leg. So the benefit to this type of double leg as opposed to shooting in from the outside is you've already closed the distance. You're already behind your opponent. As soon as they turn and face you, you're changing levels and taking them down. Now, this could look a little different depending on how early that reaction comes. So sometimes you'll see Marcelo drag the arm and change levels as he's dragging. Sometimes you see him get all the way behind his opponent, wait for them to turn and face him, and then change levels. But either way, the concept is the same. So what if you're playing butterfly and your opponent just stands up? This is going to happen. It's a common reaction. You could still technically go for the arm drag. The problem with the arm drag is if your opponent stands up before you, you arm drag, now you stand up, they're onto their next step. So they're always going to be kind of ahead of you unless you have some really good timing here. The other option you have is to look at the dummy sweep. Earlier I mentioned Marcelo bridging the gap between wrestling and jiu-jitsu, and the dummy sweep is a good example of just that. The sweep itself is a simple concept. You hook your feet on the inside of your opponent's ankles, you push their knees, and they fall. The reason it works so well for Marcelo is not the move itself, it's the follow-through. He's willing to wrestle up from the bottom after he's off balance his opponent. And to me, stuff like this is what really separated Marcelo from the group. It felt like for a long time in jiu-jitsu, you either had amazing jiu-jitsu and bad wrestling or amazing wrestling and bad jiu-jitsu. And Marcelo's looked more like this, where they almost complemented each other. I look at Butterfly as a bridge to get to Single Leg X. So as I mentioned earlier, Single Leg X isn't a guard that you can just go directly to. So it helps to have a guard like Butterfly that you can easily set up in between so you're not caught in a position where you have no guard. Even if you do these things perfectly, there's still going to be little windows in between guards that good passers can capitalize on. But the last place you ever want to be against a good passer is in a position where you have no guard at all. So imagine your goal is to get to Single Leg X, which involves putting your legs and your hips between your opponent's legs, but they won't stand up. So how are we going to clear this space between their legs? So you can use the butterfly guard to elevate your opponent and then you can put yourself in between their legs. Now there's a lot of other guards that you can use to bridge this gap. The reason butterfly is so beneficial is your feet are already in the place they need to be to set up the single leg X and you can choose which side you're going to go to. You're in kind of a neutral position in the middle so you can funnel yourself into your good side of single leg X. Starting with the reverse arm drag grip, he pulls their weight over him, guides their leg over his and then blocks their hip with his foot. And there's one little detail in this position that I think is worth noting. So if you notice, Marcelo's hooking that second foot on the same side leg that he's already controlling. This is something a lot of the modern leg lock guys are doing a little different. They're hooking on the opposite side leg, and there's a really good reason why. If you notice, when Marcelo goes to sit his opponent down, he takes a little step with that back leg. That step is preventable. If you watch Lachlan do the same move, he's using the hook on the back leg to prevent that step from happening, and it makes it a little easier to knock your opponent down. Now, I like his explanation of sitting the opponent down here, so I'll just play his clip for you guys. I need to take him backwards to the, the direction where his legs are kind of like perpendicular to, the, to this. So I'm going to, instead of pushing back, I'm now going to do a twisting motion. I'm going to try and turn his knee outwards. Imagine that means the pressure will go in that direction. Okay? So from here, I stay nice and tight, pinching my leg, and I turn his knee out, and we can come up. When you hook that foot on the back leg as opposed to the front leg, it lets you make a complete connection around their leg by pinching your right knee to your left ankle. Whereas if I'm hooking that foot on the same side lead leg, their leg is always in between my knee and ankle, and it makes it a little easier for the person to turn and yank that leg out, which is a common escape for single leg X. Similar to butterfly guard, single leg X is its own system. So we could spend a whole video just breaking down single leg X and other things Marcelo does from here, like this over the top sweep, for example. But my goal isn't to break down the single leg X system. It's more so to create a path from the beginning of the match to your A game guard. And whatever guard that is, you should have a clear cut path drawn out in your head. You can never expect to just flail and land in your best guards. The same way we used Butterfly to get to Single Leg X, you could use Single Leg X to get to their traditional X guard. Now, technically, you could skip Single Leg X altogether and go directly from Butterfly to X guard. But if you do that, you're missing out on some of these potential attacks we talked about from within the Single Leg X. I think the best way to understand X guard on a meta level is to understand the table concept. And I know the table concept might be repetitive for a lot of you guys that have already heard this a thousand times, but I want to break it down for the people that have never heard it before. And I think the best way to do that is just to use good old Microsoft Paint. Okay, so I have this nice table that I pulled off of Google Images. I did not draw this, so don't expect much from me on the artistry side, but the circle represents the leg that's up on your shoulder in the X guard. The X represents the leg that you have your legs crossed on in the back. And then the two free legs of the table represent the person's arms. So every sweep you're gonna do from this guard is gonna involve this concept here. So if you take out the two arms, you can sweep the person in this direction, right? 
if you take out the back ones, let's say I have the X controlling this and I control this arm. Now I can sweep the person in this direction. And it applies to all four directions. If you remember the video I showed of Lachlan sitting the person down, he was controlling the X on this side with his legs, controlling this with his hand, and then he was able to sit the person back this way using the same table concept. And it even goes backwards up over the head. So you're controlling this. Let's say you grab this arm. We showed the, the over the top sweep Marcelo did earlier. Now you can take the person this way, right? I apologize for my arrows, but I think you guys get the gist of it. I said this on every position I covered and I'm going to say it again. X guard is a system and it's a system that I'm not here to show you. So if you really like X guard and you want to dive deeper into it, there's an endless amount of techniques out there that you could dive into and add to your X guard game. You should look at my videos like you're going out to eat Korean barbecue. Like I'm going to lay out everything you need to have a delicious dinner, but at the end of the night, you're cooking your own damn food. Earlier in the video, I mentioned how Marcelo's guards all synergize with each other. So one guard flows into the next guard. They all kind of work together to accomplish whatever your goal is. Well, his submissions work in a very similar way where he takes a general approach. He throws the initial attack out there. And then whatever your reaction to that attack is, is going to dictate the next move that he does. The north-south choke is a good example where you're on top of your opponent. You wrap their neck. If you prevent them from turning into you, they have a choice to make. They stay there and get north-south choked or they turn away and set up the guillotine. And here you can see a similar scenario with a different result. So Marcelo's on top, trying to pass. He's able to wrap the neck from the top position, but instead of staying on his back or turning away, this time his opponent turns in, which again sets up the guillotine. Now we can't talk about Marcelo without talking about the high elbow guillotine. To me, this is Marcelo's signature move to the point where a lot of people still call this the Marcelatine. So why would someone use this type of guillotine as opposed to a traditional one? A lot of people have taught me this move in a way where they make it seem like it's the leverage. Like you get a little more leverage with this grip and it makes it a little easier to finish the choke. But I don't actually think that's the case. To me, the real benefit for this grip is to shut down your path out. A lot of your escapes are going to involve using that right hand to undo the grip or using that right hand to reach up and cross face. And by putting my left elbow up in your path, it shuts down a lot of those escapes out. Now you might be thinking, but his opponent has a free arm, so why couldn't they just use the free arm to reach up and undo the grip? Well, the way the high elbow guillotine is positioned, the grip isn't directly under the neck. He's pulling it through to the opposite side of the neck, the same side that he's blocking. So for his opponent to reach that hand all the way across to the opposite side is a lot of distance to cover. There's a place in this video for the rear naked choke and the one arm choke and how those things work together, but I already broke them down in a separate video, so I'll just put a link to that on screen for you guys. Now to recap everything we went over, my goal with this video is not to deep dive into each individual position, right? It's for you guys to see these systems as a whole so you can see how they work together and maybe you can piece together any disconnected systems you may have. Now, as you can tell, I'm losing my voice, so I don't want to drag this thing on too long, but I want to thank you guys for being here. It really means a lot to me. If you feel like you learned something from this video, like, subscribe, you know, all that good stuff. And I'll see you guys on the next one.